Hello and welcome to my video seminar on Memo Technologies and Power Control, Scheduling and Interference Management. I will start with my brief introduction. My name is uh, Salman and I'm from Pakistan. And my educational background is uh, here. Uh, I have done my BS in Electronics Engineering from Pakistan and then uh, I have a Master Electronics degree from Italy. So partly my degree was my coursework was completed in the Politecnico di Torino University, which was which is in Milan, Italy. And then I did my master's thesis at Chalmers University of Technology, which is in Sweden. And currently, I'm doing my PhD at Network System Lab at Inha University in South Korea. While starting my presentation, I would like to introduce you to the MAMO, which is very important for to understand before I go into deep in details. And MIMO, we have generally we have a transmitter and then we have a receiver. And MIMO systems, it means it stands for multiple input and multiple output, which means that there are multiple antennas at the transmitter side, and then there are multiple antennas at the receiver side that we have denoted like this M antennas, a transmitter, and N receiving antennas. So each antenna make a link with an other antenna from the transmitter to the receiver as you can see in this picture. And there, here we have a MAMO channel and this channel then have some degrading phenomena like reflection, refraction, scattering and those things happen with the wireless signals. And when the signal from the transmitter reaches out to the receiver, it encounters some distortion. So the use of uh, multiple antenna at the transmitter side and also at the receiver side opens up a new spatial domain that can be exploited in several ways to increase the transmission rate, to increase the robustness of the system and to increase the signal to noise ratio. So if we see the uh, brief history of the MIMO, uh, back in 2004 uh, we were using the SISO system which mean we were having single antenna at the transmitter and single antenna at the receiver. And for example, in the 3G system when it was introduced in 20, 2004, uh, it was capable of having a data rate up to 384 kbps because of single antenna transmitter and single antenna uh, at the receiver. And there was no such gain like multiplexing gain or diversity gain or area coding gain. Then at 2010, the MAMO was discovered and then the MAMO was capable to withstand up to 300 Mbps of throughput and it was employed in the LTE systems. The difference between the MAMO in the 2010 and the MAMO in 2017 was the uh, single user MAMO which was used in the 2010 and the 2010 recently which was used as multiple user MAMO that I'll just explain you in a while. The single user MIMO was capable to handle this much of throughput. However, the multi user MIMO is capable to withstand up to 1 Gbps of the data rate. And just recently, we have the 5G introduced, which uses the Nisio MIMO. And the 5G has a throughput of as big as 20 Gbps. So I'll be using these two slides. I'll be moving back and forth. There are some uh, brief acronyms like uh, SU MIMO, MU MIMO, or like things like that, CDDs, these kind of terms. I have to explain it more details in my alternative slides. I have covered this lecture into two videos. In the first session of the lecture, I will cover the DL MIMO technique, which contains the SU MIMO, MU MIMO, detection schemes, and transmit diversity. And once we see all the details of the DL MAMO technique, then in the next video, I'll explain you the UL MAMO technique, which will cover the UL Collaborative MAMO, closed loop transmit antenna selection, and etc. etc. So we will see everything in deep and details. The supported MAMO schemes and 3GPD LTE release add. So we have the downlink MAMO and the uplink MAMO. Downlink means that the base station is communicating with the user equipment. So all the signals and all the strategies that is used from the base station to the user equipment, it is called downlink. And the uplink mean uh, when the user equipment is communicating with the base station. So firstly, 
let me introduce you to the SU memo and the MU memo and the transmit receiver diversity and then we will see each of these things in details. SU memo stands for single user multiple input multiple output and the MU memo stands for the multi user multiple input and multiple output. As I explained to you the uh, single user memo was introduced in 2010 in the LTE but the multi user memo it was introduced in 2070 which is a bit recent one implementation and there you can see a very huge difference in the throughput bit from the MU memo and also from the SU memo. The single user memo each generation of the wireless technology has used advanced and antennas technology to improve network speed. 3G employs the single user memo which leverages multiple simultaneous data streams to transmit from the base station to the single user. However, on the other hand, the MU memo, multi-user memo, is a dominant technology in 4G system. It sends different data streams to different users, providing significant capacity and performance advantage over 3G. So here are the example of SU memo where you can see that all the layers has been assigned to a single user equipment. On the other hand, in the multi-memo, there are different user equipments and different layers have been assigned to the different UEs. Although this is not so much related to the presentation, but I will just uh, briefly introduce you to this one as well. And the 5G mantra is to increase the network capacity and data rates while minimizing the operator expenses. Users also increasingly expect wireless data services to deliver wireline quality. 5G Messio Memo will help operator to achieve these goals. It delivers high data rates to many users, help to increase capacity, it will support real-time multimedia services without requiring much additional. Messio Memo and the special multiplexing, each channel carries independent information. If the environment scatters is rich enough, Many independent subcarriers are created in the same allocated bandwidth, thus achieving the multiplexing gain with no additional cost in the bandwidth or power. With Mesio Memo, multiple antenna focus to the transmitter and the receiver signal into a small region of space, bringing the huge improvement in the throughput and energy efficiency. The more data stream, the greater the data rate and the more efficient use of radiated power. This approach also improves the link reliability. An increase in antenna means more degree of freedom that can be spent on spatial diversity. It improves the selectivity in the transmit and receive data streams to enhance the interference cancellation. And then we have the transmit and receiver diversity. The trans transmit diversity use transmit diversity, which is TX diversity, to diminish the effect of fading by transmitting the same information from two different antennas. The data from the second antenna, which is the open loop antenna 2, is encoded differently to distinguish it from the antenna 1. The user equipment must be able to recognize the information coming from the two different locations and properly decode the data. Receiver diversity. In wireless applications, the diversity receiver are often used to improve the reception of the RF signals. A diversity receiver utilizes multiple independent antenna systems. The receiver look at the signal coming in from each and every antenna and determine which one is the stronger. It then switches to that stronger signal. The receiver is consistently comparing to see which antenna is providing the better signal and quickly switch from one to the other as the signal strength changes. Now when we look at the SU memo, um, in the downlink we have the closed loop spatial multiplexing which we also refer to CLSM. In the closed loop spatial multiplexing we have further some features. So let's see what is a closed loop spatial multiplexing and then we will go and see the also the difference with the open loop spatial multiplexing. So the open loop and closed loop spatial multiplexing are depicted in these two, two figures. There are two operation modes of the code book pre-coding that we will see in a while in the forthcoming slides. One is the uh, 
closed loop operation and the other is the open loop operation these two these two modes differs in terms of extract the signal of the precoder matrix and how the matrix is selected by the network and make known to the terminal and the open loop spatial multiplexing this form of memo is used within the LTE system involving two different information streams which can be transmitted over two or more antennas. However, there is no feedback from the user equipment although uh, uh, TRI which is the transmit rank indicator from the user equipment can be used by the base station to determine the number of spatial layer. The closed loop spatial multiplexing this form of the LTE memo is similar to, is similar to the open loop version but uh, as the name indicates it has feedback incorporated to the closed loop. A pre-coding matrix indicator which is called the PMI is feedback from the user equipment to the base station. This enables the transmitter to pre-code the data to optimize the transmission and enable the receiver to more easily separate the different data streams. Now there is another term before I explain you without CDD and then with CDD. So to explain you these two terms uh, without CDD and with CDD, let's go and see what a CDD is in the other slide. So the CDD stands for the cyclic delay diversity. The cyclic delay diversity is a kind of transmit diversity mechanism implemented by implying different phase delay for each OFDM subcarrier. It is used in the spatial multiplexing to increase the diversity between the uh, two spatial paths. One antenna is transmitting the original copy of the data and the other antenna is transmitting the cyclic shift version of the original data as illustrated in this example. If you represent the uh, transmitting data in the frequency domain and the original data in the cyclic shift can be represented as follows. As you can see, the cyclic shift in the time domain produces the phase shift for each symbol and frequency domain and it generates the same effect as the frequency diversity. So when we implement the closed loop spatial multiplexing, it is implemented with without CDD. And when we implement the open loop spatial multiplexing or OLSM, it is with CDD. Closed loop spatial multiplexing is implemented with code book precoding and this uh, open loop spatial multiplexing is also implemented with the code book precoding. So I would like to explain you the code book precoding. In multi antenna techniques, precoding is used to map the mod modulation symbol onto different antennas. The type of precoding depends on the multi antenna technique used as well as the number of layers and the number of antenna ports. The aim with pre-coding is to achieve the best possible data reception at the receiver. Under the codebook pre-coding mode, the UE gets the channel state information from the common reference signal uh, sent by the base station and feedback those uh, pre-coding matrix index. Then the base station applies the special domain pre-coding and the transmitter ranking and to account the PMI coming from the UE so that the transmitter signal matches with the channel experienced by the user equipment. Not that the PMI may be changing by the base station according to the instantaneous state and then will be sent to the back to the UE. After the pre-coding operation, the UE receives the information from the base stations on what pre-coding matrix is used, which is utilized by the UE for demodulating the data. So if it is the closed loop spatial multiplexing, the pre-coded index is fed by the user equipment as I explained you because in the closed loop the pre-coder matrix index or the PMI is sent by the UE to the base station. But on the other hand in the loop open loop spatial multiplexing there is no feedback from the user equipment to the base station that's why the pre-coder index is chosen by the base station itself. So the antenna ports and layers the LTE standard defines what are known as the antenna ports and the antenna ports do not correspond to the physical antenna but rather are logical entities distinguished by the reference signal sequences. 
Multiple antenna signal ports can be transmitted on a single transmit antenna and correspondingly a single antenna ports can be spread across multiple transmit antennas. The layers are the streams are rank produced by the antennas. So in the closed loop there are 2 to 4 antenna ports while in the open loop there are also 2 to 4 antenna ports because they are similar. We have 1 to 4 layers and in the open loop we have 2 to 4 layers. We will see these details uh, later on. And we have 1 to 2 code words and here we have also 1 to 2 code words. Uh, this FFS is uh, for further studies which means that it is still under research and it's a term used by the 3GPP 20K that a topic will discuss further and any agreement will be based on the further analysis. So for the UL memo there is no clear SU memo strategy defined until now by the 3GPP. In the MU memo as we saw earlier uh, there is a single layer per UE and there is a linear pre-coding technique applied there for the downlink memo. However, for the UL memo, there is collaborative memo. So the collaborative memo uses distributed antenna and different radio devices to achieve close to theoretical gains of memo. The basic idea of collaborative memo is to group multiple devices into virtual antenna array to achieve memo communications. The corporate memo uh, transmission involves multiple point-to-point -point radio links and possibly links between different virtual arrays. So the collaborative memo multiple input multiple output is advanced technology it can effectively exploit the spatial domain of the mobile fading channel to bring significant performance improvement to the wireless communication systems. It is also called network memo or distributed memo, virtual memo or virtual antenna arrays or corporative memos. So the advantages are the capability to improve the capacity, seal edge throughput, coverage and group mobility of a wireless network in a cost effective manner. But the drawbacks are increasing system complexity and large signal overhead required for supporting device cooperation. Likewise, the transmit and receiver diversity in the DL memo, um, it uses the um, SFBC and SFBC with the FSTD, we will just see it in a while and it used the transmit antenna selection. When the closed loop antenna selection is enabled, the base station indicates which antenna should be used for the transmission by implicitly coding the information in the uplink scheduling grant. There is a 16-bit CRC which is scrambled by one of the two antenna selection masks. The supported multi-antenna modes. So there are different channels like PDSCH, PMCH, PCFICH. So all these acronyms have some meanings. I'll going, I'm going to explain each and every one one by one. In future, I'm going to use these acronyms only. Like for example, if I have to use the PDSCH. I'm not going to use the complete name of it, which is physical downlink shared channel. Uh, however, I'll be keep using the PDSCH, RPMCH, etc. etc. Let me explain each and every of these acronym and, and details because we will be seeing these things very frequently now in my further slides. PDSCH, which stands for the physical downlink shared channel. So in the LTE, the downlink shared channel, which is the DLSCH, is a transport channel used for transmission of user data, dedicated control and user-specific higher layer information and downlink system informations. The physical downlink shared channel, or PDSCH, is the physical channel that carries the DLSCH coded data. So let me explain the DLSCH and the PDSCH both separately. Transport block CRC attachment. Here the error detection for the transport blocks are provided by a 24-bit cyclic redundancy check. And then it is fed to the code block segmentation. The code block segmentation splits the input data bit into code block segments and then it is fitted to the channel coding. There are different types of channel coding schemes. You may have seen like hem encoding, convolutional encoding, turbo coding. So this basically using the turbo coding. The code blocks are individually turbo coded. 
the turbo coated blocks are then individually rated matched and resulting red matched blocks are concatenated and to create a single code words for transmission to the PDSCH and this code words is then given to the PDSCH the scrambling can transmit up to two code words and a subframe and for each code words the bits are scrambled with certain scrambling sequence then we have a modulation mapper the scramble coded words are then symbol modulated using one of the modulation scheme and the modulation schemes used are different depending upon the incoming code words it can be QPSK 16 qualm 64 qualm or 256 qualm so it can be different and then it is given to the layer mapping the complex modulation symbol are then mapped on to one or several layers according to the transmission schemes for a single port a single layer is used for transmit diversity one of the code word is allowed and the number of layers must be equal to the number of the antenna ports used for the transmission of the physical channel for spatial multiplexing one or two code words can be transmitted and up to eight layers can be used and the number of layers is less than or equal to the number of ports so please remember this thing we will be seeing these things like the number of layers cannot be ex exceeded from the available antenna ports used for the transmission of the physical channel the next stage is the uh, pre-coding the pre-coding stage takes the data from the layers and returns the data to be transmitted and the number of antennas this stage is transparent for transmit diversity pre-code for spatial multiplexing depends on whether the antenna ports with special specific reference signals are the mm, antenna ports with ue specific reference signals are used the input of the precoder is given to the resource element mapper and then the complex modulator symbols are then mapped onto the resource elements to create the grid for transmission then the next channel is the PMCH. PMCH stands for the physical multicast channel. PMCH is the physical multicast channel and contains multi broadcast, multicast traffic and control information. PMCH modulation types can be QPSK, 16 qualm, and 64 qualm. Then we have the other channels which are used mostly in the transmit diversity please remember there the PDSCH it is used in the transmit diversity because it is mostly related to the downlink channel and the downlink channels are used by the transmitter so that's why it's used in the transmit diversity and it can be used closed loop as spatial multiplexing and also in the open loop spatial multiplexing and it is also used in the multi-user MIMO broadcasting channel it is not supporting any multi antenna modes and then these four channels are using the transmit diversity let me explain all these four one by one physical downlink control channel pdcch so th the next time when i use this term i'll not be using physical downlink control channel rather i'll be using the acronym which is the pdcch PDCCH is a physical channel that carries downlink control information which is also called the DCI and it has characteristic as described below. PDCCH carries DCIs which I explained this is the download, download control information and the DCI carriers transport format, resource location, HARQ information related to the downlink shared channel which I'll be using from now on DLACH and the uplink shared channel which I'll be using is ULACH and the PCH. PDCCH also carries the DC0 which is the uplink scheduling assignment. Multiple PDCCH are supported and the UE monitors a set of control channels. Since this is a lighter channel so it is uses the QPSK modulation scheme and the number of symbol for the PDCCH is specified by the PCFICH which I will just explain you in a while. Even through the PDCCH has a lot of function not all of them are used at the same time so PDCCH configuration should be done very flexibly.
Then the next channel is the physical control format indicator which is PCFICH. The physical control format indicator channel is used to inform the UE about the number of OFTM symbols used in the PDCCH in the subframe. So any amount of the subframe used in the PDCCH channel, this will inform the user equipment about such information that the PDCCH inform is using this much of the subframe. This channel consists of 32 bits, which are cell specific scrambled prior to the modulation and mapping. Then we have the physical broadcast channel and the physical broadcast channel is present in the downlink signals only. So all these four, as I mentioned above, uh, they are related to the downlink channels. So the PBCH is also one of them. PBCH is transmitted as symbol 0123 of slot 1 and occupies the central subcarriers. So you will understand these things, what are the symbols, the slots and all these things later on this in the slides. So no need to worry about these things. And the PBCH is not transmitted on any resource element is sent to cell specific reference signals or we also call this CRS so if the next time if I say something related to the cell specific reference signal I'll be just saying some this acronym CRS for the antenna port 0 1 2 and 3 since we have four antenna ports the modulation type for the PBCH is QPSK And the fourth one is the physical hybrid ARQ indicator, which is PHICH. The physical hybrid automatic repeat request or HARQ. This we will be seeing every time very frequently in the forthcoming slide. So if I say something like HARQ, please remember that it stands for the hybrid automatic repeat request. Indicator channel PHICH is the control channel which carries the acknowledgement X or NEX denoted as the hybrid ARQ indicators. These control channels play a key role in the correct decoding of the payload information. So for all the things that we explained they were related to the downlink and then we have also some uplink channel which is PUSCH, PUCCH, and PRACH, and we we will be frequently using the PUSCH and the PUCCH in the later on slide. So I will explain uh, all of them here. And if I'm using the acronym, so I hope you will be understanding what is PUSCH and what is um, PUCCH. So the PUSCH is the physical uplink shared channel. Physical uplink shared channel contains uplink user data from the user equipment to the base station. So when the resource plate auto detect is selected, the frame summary will show the information for each modulation type under the user. And when the RB auto detect is clear, the frame summary will show the PUSCH information and the PUSCH row for the uplink user currently. The next one is the physical uplink control channel this is the channel which is used for taking the user data and this one is the channel which is used for the taking the control information to the from the user equipment to the base station so the PUCCH carries a set of information called uplink control information which we also call the UCI and this is similar to the PDCCH which we just saw before which carries the DCI downlink control information so it serves the same function as the PDCCH depending on what kind of information this is the UCI and the PCCH carries the PRAC channel uh, a user equipment can be selected for the uplink transmission if it, uh, if it is time synchronized the main role for the random access procedure is to request for uplink resources and to do so it is necessary to assure such time alignment for the UE which uh, either has not yet acquired or has lost its uplink synchronization due to a new connection request, a connection recovery, a handover 
or a tracking area update etc so therefore the physical random access or PREC becomes a key factor between the non-synchronized UE and the orthogonal LTE uplink access scheme the PREC is the physical information access channel and is used by the UE to request an uplink uh, location from the base station an appropriate PREC uh, design means providing frequent enough RA opportunities and an accurate UE synchronization estimation. Besides, PREC must adopt to different cell ranges for and network conditions such as traffic propagation delay and UE mobility but without using unnecessary resources which would lead to decrease in the uplink channel capacity. PUSCH can be used in the multi-user memo. Uh, and the PUCCH and the PREC, they are not supporting any of the um, multi antenna modes. So, in this slide, we will be discussing the important aspects of the LTE. And LTE usually they use multiple antenna for downlink, uh, meaning the network has to use multiple transmit antenna and e UE use multiple receive antenna. Now you almost automatically think about MAMO, but in reality, multi antenna does not mean MAMO. For example, you have two downlink antennas. You can use uh, these two antennas in various ways. Of course, one way is to use the two cross two MAMO, but that is not the only way. You can use the two antenna in diversity configuration rather than the MAMO configuration. Or you can just use one of the antenna and sometimes you would like to use various different multiplexing decoding methods, etc. And LTE they give a special name for each of the way transmission and it is called the transmission modes for example we normally use the single SISO system or single transmit antenna and single receive antenna and it is called the transmit TM1 mode or transmission mode 1 what we normally call the diversity is called the TM2 or what we call the MIMO but with no feedback from the user equipment is called the uh, TM3 and TM4 is the MIMO with the feedback from the user equipment. So there are various purpose um, and reasons for each different transmission mode and some of the TM is designed mainly to increase the throughput, some are, uh, some are to increase the communication reliability and some are to handle the multiple user simultaneously. So from now on we are going to study some DL memo techniques and since we already saw the SU memo technique so here one user is served at a time and on the same sub carrier all the spatial dimensions or antennas are allocated to a single user at a time. So the supported techniques are the closed loop system where the UE will be giving some PMI to the uh, network are the open loop system where the base station is not having any information coming from the user or the transmit diversity that we saw earlier. Since this figure is very important so I want to cover this in more detail I will try to explain all the blocks and after that uh, once you understand the closed loop spatial multiplexing you can automatically understand the open loop too and then we can also see what is with codebook recording and also non codebook recording. So to understand the scrabbling, let's assume you are a, you are a base station and you are getting various signal from the user equipment at the same time. How would you differentiate the incoming signal into separate users at low level of your hardware? Of course, you, are, you can figure out exactly which user you are dealing with at higher layer with various uh, type of user ID. Uh, but my question is how to figure out each user at the physical layer. Now let's assume that you are a user equipment and you may be hearing from various uh, base stations simultaneously. Then how would you differentiate the incoming signal into separate base stations at a very low level of your hardware? The answer to both the question is scrambling code. By using the scrambling code, the base station can separate the signal coming from the various UE and the UE can separate the signal coming from many base stations. 
the modulation neighbor, the downlink data modulation transforms the plug of scrambled bits to the corresponding block of the complex modulation symbol. The code word from the scramble is given to the modulation mapper and the downlink data modulation transforms the block of the scramble bits to a corresponding block of complex modulation symbol. The set of modulation schemes supported for the LTE downlink includes QPSK, 16QAM and 64QAM. So uh, then we have the layer mapper to understand the layer mapper. Let's see this slide. The modulation symbols corresponding to one of the two transport blocks are first map and two layers. The number of layers may range from the minimum of one layer up to maximum equal to the number of antenna ports and we usually have four ports of the antenna. The layers are then mapped into the antenna ports by means of the precoder functionality as codebook based precoder uh, relies on the cell specific reference signal for the channel estimation and there are at most uh, four cell specific reference signals in each cell. The codebook based precoding allows for a maximum of four antenna ports and is a consequence a maximum of four layers. There is one transport block in case of a single layer and two transport blocks for two or more layers. Please remember, despite the name, not codebook based precoding may also be defined for codebooks. However, in contrast, the, in contrast to codebooks based precoding, the codebooks are then used for the manual PMI reporting and not for the actual downlink transmission. The layer information when given to the uh, precoder, we have we can have two types of the precoder. One is the codebook based precoder, and the other one is the non codebook based precoder. And the codebook based precoder, the modulation symbol are corresponding to one of the transport block are first mapped to L layers and the number of layers may range from a minimum of one layer up to maximum of four layers and maximum of layers equal to the number of antenna ports. As codebook based precoder relies on the cell specific reference signal for channel estimation and there are at most four cell specific reference signals in a cell. Codebook based precoding allows for a maximum of four antenna ports and as a consequence the a maximum of four layers. The main difference of non-codebook based precoding from the codebook based precoding is the presence of the demodulation reference signal before the precoding. Reference signals allows for demodulation and recovery of the transmitted layers at the receiver side without explicit receiver knowledge of the precoding applied at the transmitter side. And from the P antenna ports, the output is fed to the uh, resource element mapper. Since it is a closed loop spatial multiplexing, there is a user equipment which receives the signals from the base station and it estimates the channel from the based on the information and then it estimates the channel. And once the channel is estimated, it will feed back those channel information into the form of the PMI or precoder metric index to back towards the precoder of the transmitter which is the base station precoder and here it will choose for the best available path or best available channel to the user equipment. All the output is given from the P ports or uh, P antenna ports to the resource element mapper and the LTE physical layer transmits the physical channel and physical signals by mapping them onto the resource elements. And finally, they are uh, orthogonal frequency signal are generated for that one and then they are radiated by using the antennas. So here is the summary for the SU memo. In the downlink, it used maximum up to maximum up to four transmit antenna at the network and then it can use up to two code words. For the transmit uh, for the transmit diversity, it uses the space frequency block coding which we call the SFBC and also it uses the uh, and also it uses the frequency switching transmit diversity or FSGD along with the SFBC. So we may see these things in the later slides and then we have the closed loop memo which means that the unitary precoding uh, MIMO which means that 
the closed loop memo has the unit rip recording feature uh, unit rip recording is only performing rotation of the data in a way beneficial for the channel non unit rip recording additionally also uses power loading to further improve the performance and then in the open loop it has the large delay cdd so it is used uh, in spatial multiplexing to increase the diversity between the two spatial paths and the uplink it uses one transmit antenna by the user equipment and it also transmit antenna selection which is the diversity so we saw the um, codebook based process um, a while ago in the layer mapping stage we have uh, NL layers and the NL layers are depending on the number of antennas available so if there is only one antenna there will be one layer but if there are four antennas there we will have as much as four number of layers and NR is the modulation symbol on each layer which means the symbol to be transmitted on each antenna port we said it for the codebook based recording we we can use maximum four cell specific uh, reference signals in a cell for the channel estimation which means we can have the maximum of four antenna ports and four uh, layers because the layers cannot be exceeded from the number of antenna ports available and the pre-coded metri matrix is uh, equal to the number of antenna ports multiplied by the number of available layers its transmission rank can vary dynamically based on the number of, number of layers that can be supported by the channel. When we have a single layer, then the pre-coded matrix is only an A cross 1. But please remember that the UE receiver must know the pre-coding applied to the transmission. Please remember that the UE receiver must know the pre-coding applied at the transmitter. In case of uh, non-pre-coded channel reference signals, it represent the practical channel and also the basis for the channel state information measurements when we have closed loop operation that we saw in the transmission mode 4 based on the measurement of and spill specific reference signals the ue reports the rank indicator and also the pmi so uh, when we have a transmitter here and, and we have a user equipment here the user equipment consistently measure the channels and when it measures the channel, it will uh, send the channel information back to the base station. And those channel information back to the base station are sent through the RE, RI and also through the PMI. So if network follows the RI and PMI recommendation, so anything coming from the user equipment, if base station get it, and if it follows those information, it confirms to UE, otherwise network have the right to select its uh, actual uh, RI or PMI that it's just calculated by itself and inform the user equipment on the new RI or PMI selection. So anything can happen, although the user equipment can send the uh, channel state information using the PMI or RI but still the network has the right whether to accept those in those information and use it or to use its own information that it has calculated and just communicate with the user equipment so there is also the option of the transmit um, mode 6 which is used for reducing the signaling overhead on the downlink and uplink for the user equipment with respect to the low SINR or signal to inter interference noise ratio. Here in this table we can see the mm, pre-coder matrix for two antenna ports and when we have one layer then we will have mm, it can be denoted as such and if there are two layers then it can be denoted as like this. After layer mapping a set of NL symbols is linearly combined and mapped to the antenna ports. This combination or mapping can be described by the pre-coder matrix which is denoted by W and the size is usually the number of antenna ports multiplied by the number of layers available more specifically the vector yi is the uh, xi times of uh, W so one symbol for each antenna port is given by for example this yi bar and it's equal to the um, W cross xi where the vector xi of size nl consists of one symbol for each layer 
as the number of layers can vary dynamically and also the number of columns of the precoder matrix will vary dynamically specifically in the case of a single layer where uh, w is, is equal to number of antenna ports cross one that provides the beam forming for a single modulation symbol and conversely we have this case for the transmission mode 3 which is the open loop non code book based recording as i explained earlier and code book based antenna ports are after the layers nl and precoded happens after the antenna ports in case of the code book based the antenna ports are after the nl layers and the precoding happens after the antenna ports and then the cell specific reference signal is applied after the precoding while in the case of the non code book based method the antenna ports are after the precoding and the demodulation reference signal or we call it the dmrs are applied after the layering so when as the layers are done there is the demodulation reference signal fed to it then it is precoded and finally it is uh, given to the antenna ports but this precoding is the non code book based precoding The non code book based recording is applicable to the DLACH and recorder is not visible in the LTE specifications. So antenna ports are equal to the number of layers and the recording is happening after the antenna ports that I just explained. In the release at we have transmission mode 7 where the number of layers is 1. But in the release 9 which is transmission mode 8 we have the number of layer equal to 2 and the release 10 we have transmission mode 9 where the number of layers here are as much as 8. So differences versus the code book based precoding in the DM DMRS the channel estimation based on the precoding demodulation reference signal which we said DMRS reflects the channel experienced by layers including the precoding. The channel experienced by layer including the precoding and it is used directly for the coherent demodulation of the layers and no need to signal any precoder matrix information to UE which only needs to know the number of layers that means the transmission rank network select an arbitrary precoder and no need for any explicit code book to select from so based on the uplink sounding re reference signals the uplink and downlink repository in the TDD and based on the UE feedback for PM selection same precoded matrix is the is for codebook based precoding using the CSRS and it is used for the non codebook based precoding however it still relies on defined codebooks from the user equipment feedback but that codebook from the user feedback are only used for the UE PMI reporting not for the downlink transmission so far we studied the SU memo and let me move to the other part of my presentation which is the MU memo or multi-user multiple input and multiple output so as I explained you before that in MU memo each UE is given a separate layer so every UE has an individual layer and that's the reason that at a time multiple UEs are served and when multiple UEs are served, it means that there will be more capacity cover. The UEs can feed back to the network and when they feed back to the network using the pre-coded matrix index using the PMI, that helps in the maximization of the receiver SINR and corresponding SINR per each stream. So when that is increased, it means that the corresponding SINR for, per stream is increased. So it is almost the same as the SU memo uh, where the first the incoming code word is scrambled and after scrambling it is given to the modulation mapping and then once it is some modulation like QPSK 16COM 64COM or whatever is done with the um, incoming code words it is given to the layer mapping and once it is layer according to the ports available l, l l ports available it is given to the precoder matrix and since there is a single layer per ue so a single layer is given to the, to the precoder 
and the precoder also gets some information from various users in the previous case since all the resources were all allocated at the same time to a single user so only one ue was there but here so there can be as much user as much the number of layers available and because of that different user will be sending their channel state information or the PMIs to the uh, precoder at the transmitter side or the base stations. So those precoders uh, will def therefore those precoder will have a micro MU processor to uh, separate or distinctly recognize the information coming from our separate user for example UE1 or UE2 up to UE4, or UE3 or UE4 so all the information coming from the UEs are processed here and they are distinctly given to the uh, precoder channel selector on the other hand as I explained you the user equipment or the receiver at measure the channel and based on the channel estimation it will send the channel information quality to the PMI and likewise for here in this case using the antenna ports those precoded information are given to the resource element mapper and then the resource element mapper will using the OFDM signal generation and once the OFDM signal is generated they are radiated through the antennas and finally it will be received back at this receiver so the signal coming from the transmitter to the receiver it is again estimated and again channel state information is calculated here and those are sent again back to the transmitter and this process is continued so the difference between su memo and mu memo is in the sm transmission of multi layers that is multiple parallel transmission on the same frequency resources to the same ue as i explained and multiple antenna at transmitter or receiver used to suppress the information among different layers on the other side the mu memo transmission to different ue using the same time frequency and multiple antenna at transmitter used to separate the transmission and all the ues and memo and mu memo transmission needs to know the full set of the layers being transmitted to get the layer only from the user from the specific user from the full set of the demodulated or the decoded layers please remember that this mu memo uh, is also implemented nowadays in the a22.11 uh, n and also a22.11 ac standards which is the wi-fi standards and widely used nowadays this mu memo standard is primarily designed for the 3gpp lte It requires the single receiver antenna at the, uh, at the UE and all the users in the MU memo transmission do not need to know the full set of the layers on the transmission which makes the work much easier and less complicated for it and the computational power also is reduced that is the UE does not need the knowledge on the presence of other transmissions so the in the release 8 uh, they have also put the CRS uh, and the MU memo which they have called the transmission mode 5 and it, it has used some minor modification in the transmission mode 4 that we just saw earlier which is the closed loop based uh, beam farming But the drawback of that is uh, it is limited to the single rank transmission and two users in parallel. And the MU memo and transmission mode 8 or 9, and which is implemented in release 9 and 10, there is no SU memo. For example, single layer per UE, two layers per UE are four different signals for four transmissions and parallel to the users. Another technique called MU memo with per user unitary and rate control. PU2RC which is adopted in the 3GPP LTE PU2RC steps to select a precoder matrix are following so the first three the first three steps are performed by the user equipments and the last two steps are performed by the network so in the first step the channel is estimated and then it tries all the precoded matrix and compute the SINR for all the column vectors and then it feedback all the information or the channel state information to the uh, ENB precoded matrix index 
which is we call PMI and the corresponding SINR for the each column vectors. Once the E and B are the network receives those information, it groups the users which request a pre-coded vector from the same codebook of the matrix and then it schedules the group of the user which maximizes the sum rate. So based on some sum rate target, it will provide the resources. For the detection, uh, we have several type of uh, detection uh, like linear detection, decision feedback detection and quasi uh, ML detection or uh, maximum likelihood detection. The simplest one detection is on the left side and the, the most complex uh, detection algorithms are on the right side. So the simplest are starting from the zero forcing and then MMSE and then the further complicated are the sorted qrd or vblast and then the more sophisticated algorithms which has improved performance but not only improved performance but also we have to pay the cost in terms of increased complexity which contains like the sphere decoder or the fixed sd qrd m algorithm or these these types of algorithm that you can see here on the rightmost side So here are again the list of the linear decoder and the non-linear decoder and the ML decoder and then the mm, for example the sphere decoding where the maximum likelihood decoder can achieve super performance yet the computational complexity is enormous high receiver based on the sphere decoding reaches the performance of ML detectors and potentially a great deal of computation cost can be saved. And the QRD de decomposition with uh, M is a tree-based search algorithm which has been proposed to provide near maximum likelihood de detection performance with lower computation complexity and multiple input and multiple output systems. And this the uh, latest detection added um, auto detection algorithm which is LRAD. The key point of LRAD is to transform the systems model into an equivalent uh, one with a better condition channel matrix. As a result, LRAD can significantly improve the bit error rate performance with smaller addition complexity and memo systems. There are some diversity schemes explained here. So the time diversity where the multiple versions of the same signal are transmitted at different time instead, alternatively, uh, redundant forward error correction coding which we call the FAC is added and the message is spreaded in time by means of the bit interleaving before the transmission. This uh, error burst are avoided which simplifies the error correction ARQO. Uh, ARQO stands for the automatic repeat uh, request or hybrid ARQO. This ARQO or hybrid ARQO is also somehow related to the uh, FEC coding or channel coding. Then we have the uh, frequency diversity. Frequency diversity is the process of receiving a radio signal or component of a radio signal on multiple channels uh, or different frequencies over a wide radio channel to reduce the effect of radio signal distortion that occurs on one frequency component but uh, do not occur on another frequency component. And then we have the space diversity or it is also called the antenna diversity. Also it is sometimes called the spatial diversity that uses two or more antennas to improve the quality and reliability of the wireless link. Especially in urban and indoor environments and there is no clear line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. Instead the signal is reflected along the multiple path uh, before finally being received. And each of these bonds can introduce the phase shift time delays, attenuation and distortion that can destructively interfere with one of the with one another and at the aperture of the received antenna. Antenna diversity is especially effective at, at, at mitigating these multipath uh, situations. The polarization diversity uh, is a mean to reduce the size of MAMO equipment terminal and base stations. Orthogonally polarized antennas give rise to low correlation even if co-located. 
there are vertically and horizontally polarized diversity options and also there is the multi-user diversity multi-user diversity is obtained by the opportunistic user scheduling at either the transmitter or the receiver the opportunistic user scheduling is uh, for example at any given time the transmitter selects the uh, best user among the candidate received according to the quality of uh, each channel between the transmitter and uh, each of the receiver so a receiver must feedback the um, feedback the channel quality information to the transmitter using the limited level of resolution and order for the transmitter to implement the multi-user diversity and there are also maybe some other diversity schemes here we explain the transmit diversity so there are two terms here one is the link adaptation and the other is channel dependent scheduling scheduling link adaptation denotes the matching of modulation coding and other signals and protocols parameters to the mm, conditions on the radio link however the channel dependent scheduling uh, is used in hspa for similar reasons as in lte such as the rapid adapt to varying traffic and radio channel conditions bch broadcast channel the lte transport channels maps to broadcast control channel and the broadcast control channel uh, provides some system information to all mobile terminals connected to the network the downlink share channel this transport channel is the main channel for the downlink data transfer and it is used uh, by main logical channel and the paging channel it is uh, to convey the pcch uh, the pcch uh, is the a paging control channel this control channel is used for paging information when searching a unit on a network the fallback mode uh, with the circuit switch fallback when the user's device is operated in lte mode and a uh, call is incoming the lte network pages the device and the device respond with a special request message to the network and the network signals the device to move to the 2g or 3g to accept the incoming call similarly for the outgoing call some special service uh, request is used to move the device to 2g or 3g so all these channel conditions are used for the transmission diversity there are also some uh, cell specific reference signals for the channel estimation where the number of antenna ports uh, given from the number of cell specific reference signals for a cell so mm, partly user equipment blindly detects the number of antenna ports from the bch which was uh, and the downlink and decides the number of cell specific reference signals and the cell here we have the sfbc so the sfbc is basically the serial to parallel converter and there are two antenna ports for the sfbc so all the signals coming in they are converted to the parallel port and then there is some crs added to it that i had explained you earlier so at the antenna port 0 and the antenna port 1 they don't carry the similar information at the same time for example here the antenna port 0 is carrying the subcarrier 0 the the subcarrier 1 then the subcarrier 2 and there are a couple of subcarriers carried uh, on the antenna port 0 but when the antenna is carrying the subcarrier number 1 the antenna port 1 will be carrying the conjugate of the next subcarrier for example here is si plus 1 so here the si plus 1 conjugate is carried at the same time when the, the antenna port 0 was carrying the uh, si and then at the uh, second subcarrier which is si conjugate here but at the antenna port 0 it is si plus 1 so when the uh, one antenna is carrying one subcarrier the other antenna port is using the different next subcarrier conjugate and this way both the antenna using the correlation are they are mitigating the correlation so here is a figure of the 2 cross 2 sfbc or dm the data is coming in the, it is converted from serial to parallel and when it is converted from serial to parallel they are given to the sfbc encoder the SFBC encoder encoded in such a way that the first data, uh, uh, the data component is given to the, uh, f the first part, whereas the, the conjugate of the next one is given to 
the same row and likewise the next part is given here but the conjugate of the first is given here and then both of them are OFDM modulated they are then radiated and transmitted towards the user equipment at the receiver side there is a uh, user equipment which takes the data coming from the transmitter demodulated and there is a linear combiner stage at the SFBC decoder and after that there is the maximum likelihood uh, detector it optimally detects the received signal based on least distance and finally the data is received here so in the transmit diversity we can have two choices either uh, in the time domain which is the time switch transmit diversity or in the frequency domain which is the frequency switch um, transmit diversity so in the time domain the transmit switch uh, transmit diversity the continuous symbol of all the subcarriers are transmitted alternatively every millisecond duration from uh, either of the two antenna but in the frequency domain the symbols are of the adjacent subcarriers in the same OFDM symbol duration are transmitted alternatively from either of the two antennas. In case of the PDSCH or PDCCH or BCH channels, the transmit diversity schemes uses either the SFBC or SFBC with the FSTD. We can send it either through the time domain or the frequency domain as we saw in the previous slide. And here we have the number of uh, antenna ports uh, when we are using the SFBC with the FSTD then in that case we can use as much as four ports that we will see in the next fig figure and we can transmit it either in the different time slots or in the different frequency bands here is an example of transmit diversity with four antenna ports as you can see here we have antenna port 0 and two antenna port 1 antenna port 2 and antenna port 3 so when SI is transmitted then only the conjugate of this one will be transmitted in the second slot not in the first one and then this subcarrier is not at a time transmitted here but when as i plus one is transmitted this is going blank this one is going blank however the previous it was transmitted the conjugate was transmitted previously so there is no correlation between each subcarrier and they are transmitted like that the cyclic delay diversity the cyclic delay um, are inserted in, at the transmitter and their orthogonality among the subcarrier is maintained so no more inter symbol interference and no limits for the cyclic shift and there is no rate loss for the large number of antennas at the receiver side a simple conventional single input single output OFDM receiver can be used and no additional complexity is required at the receiver side and it is possible since the cyclic shift makes the receiver signal appear as a multi-signal at the receiver so it's kind of uh, opportunistic this is very clear in this figure so uh, it's sim it is similar to delay diversity with the main difference that at cyclic diversity operates blockwise and applies the cyclic shift rather than linear delays to different antennas the cyclic delay is applicable to the plug based transmission schemes such as the OFDM and DFTS OFDM. In the case, in the case of OFDM transmission, a cyclic shift of uh, one time domain signal corresponds to the um, frequency domain phase shift uh, before the OFDM modulation. Similar to delay diversity, this will create artificial frequency selectivity as seen by the receiver. Also similar to the delay diversity, CDD can be straightforwardly be extended to more than two transmitter antenna with different cyclic shifts for each antenna. The transmit signal um, equivalently represented in the frequency domain which is called the phase diversity can directly be calculated from the IFFT with the length NF. Here the SL and the SK denotes the complex value signals in time domain and the frequency domain respectively. So here the SL denotes the complex value of the signal in time domain and SK denotes the complex value signal in the frequency domain. Also the K, K denotes the frequency and L denotes the time index. The cyclic delay cannot be, um, cannot in fact reduce the total number of error bits. The error distribution is changed by the cyclic delay. This improves the 
channel decoding performance and after the cyclic delay the error bits of the transmitter signal have more dispersive dis distribution so far we studied the dl memo techniques and now from now on we will be going to study the ul or the uplink memo techniques ul collaborative memo where the two use user equipment shares the same resources and also the closed loop antenna selection which selects either one of the two antenna techniques are used. UL Collaborative MIMO. So here we have two UEs with a single transmit antennas and they both have some shared resources. Uh, we can see that uh, this one, these, these are belonging to the pilots the blue one is corresponding to this user and the green one is corresponding to this user so if you see that the this one the the, the first diagonal and the last diagonal of the you know, first one ue are used by as a pilot for the first ue so these are these have not been used by the second user equipment they are kept blank here and likewise the off diagonal first and the last that you can see here they are ser serving as a pilots for the second user equipment and that's that's the reason they are they, they have not been used here for the first ue and they, they are being blank and all the rest of them the rest of the data blocks are used as our data pilots for this one the blue are for the first user equipment and the green ones are for the second user equipment so two UE uh, with a single transmit antenna are used here and th there is also UE grouping so they are sharing the time and frequency resources as well. So when there is a closed loop transmit antenna selection uh, which we also call CLTAS uh, and CLTAS required to optimize the transmission from MU memo. So the, the user equipment always transmits the information, the channel state information towards the transmitter or the E node B based on the feedback measurement. So anything that is coming from the transmitter to the receiver and then when it is measured from there, the channel uh, is estimated, then uh, some feedback is there toward the transmitter again and then again the, there is uh, a chance of increasing the signal to noise ratio and uh, for the transmission from the transmitter side to the receiver and the downlink as well in case of su memo open loop uh, tas or oltas can be employed and tdd by exploiting the channel reciprocity uh, the transmitter can estimate the downlink channel from the sounding and the uplink channel such reciprocity relies on the accuracy and the accurate calibration of the transceiver RF chains. So these memo techniques are belonging to release 10 and for the multiplexing of the PUSCH, uh, please recall all the acronym that I had introduced at the beginning of the presentation. So all the PUSCH or PUCCH or DLSCH, all these things are belonging to those acronyms that I have already introduced you at the beginning of the uh, presentation. So for the uh, multiplexing of PUSCH, antenna recording supports the SM which is standing for the SU memo. So antenna recording supporting SU memo with up to four layers. For diversity of PUCCH, it supports the transmit diversity. Precoder based uh, multi antenna transmission for the PUSCH. So um, UL antenna precoder pre supports the transmission after the four antennas and it allows the SU memo with up to the four layers. Similarly, for the downlink uh, antenna precoding, the precoding of uh, TMRMS. Uh, which is uh, one per layer uh, it is similar to the non codebook based processing the dft is also provided here after the layer mapping and each dft is separately provided to the uh, each layer so the layer from coming from the layer mapping uh, and when it is going towards the pre-coding there is a dft which is applied to each layer individually and then finally it is going to the pre-coded stage 
demodulation reference signal or DMRS uh, that we have seen before um, it also sometimes referred to the UE specific reference signal are specifically intended to be used by the terminal for channel estimation for the PDSCH in case of transmission mode 7 or 8 or 9 the UE specific relates to the fact that the that each demodulation reference signal is intended for the channel estimation by a single terminal their specific reference signal is then only transmitted within the resource blocks assigned for the PDSCH transmission to that terminal. So as you can see here, the UL resource block, uh, the DMRS is allocated to the fourth one and the eleventh subframe of the resource block. So um, here in LTA we have the resource blocks and each resource block is contained several subcarriers on the Y axis and then there are the X axis is composed of the subframe. So each subframe contains several subcarriers. Mapping of the modulated symbol to the layers. So as we saw that we have transport block is ready, then it is mapped into layers and then the layers are depending on the number of ports available. We can go as much as four layers because we have four number of ports available. So similar to the DL, the uplink also have the same strategy. And for the HARQ retransmission, single transport block may be transmitted on multiple layers in some cases. For the pre-coded DMRS, similar to the DL case where we use the non-coded based uh, pre-coding, the pre-coder is not visible in the specs. The network apply our battery pre-coder for the downlink transmission and the UE recovers the layers without knowing the transmitter pre-coding due to the use of the pre-coder DMRS. The LTE UL precoder matrix that is selected by the network and conveyed to the UE by the scheduling grant. So the UE should follow the precoder matrix selected by the network. And the good thing is the precoder is visible in the uplink. There are limited seats of the precoder matrix for each transmission rank. And to limit the DL signals, then for each combination of the transmission rank which we are calling it NLR number of layers and the number of antenna ports which is divided by NA. We can say that a set of pre-coded matrix of size NA cross NL is defined. For a full rank transmission, uh, we have NA is equal to NL. And please remember that a rank of a transmission is the maximum number of linearly independent columns of vectors in a matrix. So uh, when we have the NA, they are equal to the NL, then it means that only one, only a singular precoded matrix, that is the identity matrix of NA cross NA. For four antenna pores, uh, we have 24 rank 1 matrix, or 16 rank 2 matrix, or 12 rank 3 matrices, or 1 of rank 4 matrices. All the pre-coded matrix contain one and only one non-zero element in each row. You can see it here. For example, in the rank one, there is no other uh, column. So uh, we don't see any other um, column here. But here, if you can see that there are two columns in each rank and we have only one non-zero element there. And likewise, in the transmission rank three, we have um, only one non-zero and the other are all zeros. So you can see it here. One-to-one -one correspondence between the layers and antenna ports and the cubic metric properties of the transmission signals preserves for each antenna port when pre-coding is applied. The cubic metric preserving pre-coder matrix and the non-pre-coded SRS, SRS stands for the sounding reference signal based on the measurement of uplink SRS on different antenna ports which reflects the channel of each antenna ports not including by any precoder network decides on a suitable uplink transmission rank and corresponding to uplink precoding matrix to be delivered in the schedule grant and for the srs we have the 14 uh, subframe dedicated for it so again we have like the sub uh, resource blocks which contains couples of uh, subcarriers and the 14th number is dedicated for the SRS. Uplink MU memo. So for the uplink MU memo, uh, it's almost similar to the DL MU memo. And 
for the uplink transmission uh, from the multiple user equipment, it uses the same uplink frequency resources, relying on multiple resource antenna at the base station to separate one of the transmission. So this is the SU memo case where we have all the transmission, uh, for example, two antenna of the same user equipment can be used to transmit all the streams to towards the um, base station. On the other hand, we have the MU memo where different UEs are using their single antenna and they are sending their uh, informations towards the base stations and they are using a common resource block or the same uplink time frequency resources. For the uplink SU memo, for example, the UE without two layers and two antenna ports, the UE transmits uh, two transport blocks with one transmission block on each layer that is antenna ports as you can see here in this picture and on the other hand the UL memo case it is equivalent to separating two antennas uh, into two UEs so we have one antenna on this UE and the other antenna in this UE and then one transmission block per UE so it's also transmitting one block and this is also transmitting one block It is similar to uh, separating the two layers into S simplified by the classifying BF uh, relying on correlated receiving antenna and also the uncorrelated receiving antenna. So there are several benefits of the MU memo and the first benefit is it is it has similar gain in system throughput as SU memo using less resources with multiple transmit antenna at the user equipment SU memo provides gains in throughput and peaks data rates of a user. However, with the MU memo, it can achieve the same throughput or the same gain using a layer per user. Relying on more than one UE available for transmission, so um, pairing UE to share the time frequency resources and multi-user diversity gain is achieved. Support of uh, uplink MU memo only requires the possibility to explicitly assign a specific orthogonal resources for the uplink transmission and same as for uh, SU memo based on the combination of orthogonal cover codes or phase rotation. Combination of uh, SM plus MU memo. So it offers almost the same capabilities as we saw in the DLMU memo. Various user equipment by MU memo are multiplexed, where several are one UE are transmitting on more than one layer. PUCCH transmit diversity and the transmit diversity um, is introduced in the release 10, where it gives the flexibility of two antenna transmit diversity in the PUCCH. The two antenna transmit diversity for CUCCH offers the special orthogonal resource transmit diversity where it transmits the uplink controlling signal using different resources on different antennas and the different resources can be time, frequency, code and different on different antennas. And identical to the PUCCH transmission from two different UEs using different resources, uh, additional diversity by twice as much PUCCH resources compared to the non-sorted transmission can be achieved. For four transmitting antenna at the UE, implementation specific antenna virtualization is used and the transparent mapping of two antenna port signal to four physical antenna are implemented. This section is the appendix which uh, shows the codebook for the downlink layer mapping and precoding. So for the Special multiplexing, we have the code word to layer mapping uh, table here. So the first column shows the number of layers. The second column shows the number of code words. And then here is the code word to layer mapping. So when we have one layer and one code word, it, it will be like this. Here the M layer sim P is it stands for the number of symbols per layer. The MK is for MB. It stands for the number of symbols per code word K. And this XK of I, it denotes the symbol I of layer K. And the DK of I, it denotes the symbol of I of word K. So when we have two layers and two code words, it will have this much of the code word to layer mapping. And for the four and two, we will have the code word to layer mapping.
for the transmit diversity uh, we have uh, either two layers with one code one number of code word or four layer with one number of the in number of code words and we will have the code code to word mapping diversity which looks like this please note that the number of code words is always equal to one and the number of layers equal to the number of the antenna ports and when we have a pre-coding for the single antenna port then we have the dead port of output is equal to the input port dead port is 0 4 or 5 here are some details for the pre-coding without cyclic diversity and the special multiplexing support and also some the values for the recording metrics that are selected from the configured codebook and the codebook can be either full codebook or restricted codebook subset likewise for the special multiplexing support we can either use two antenna ports or the four antenna ports in case of two antenna ports we are using zero and one and four antenna ports we are using zero one two three as we can have as much as four ports codebook for transmission on two antenna ports uh, as we we know that it is two antenna ports on the port number zero and one uh, in that case we have the codebook index uh, which starts from zero one two three and then it is the number of layers can be classified as this into two and when we have four antenna ports then we have as much as four number of layers because the number of layers are equal to the maximum number of antenna ports here is an example for the four layer antenna ports and some details related to the large delay CDD for both the two antenna ports and also for the four antenna ports. So this is for two antenna ports and this one again for transmission on the four antenna ports. Here I will conclude my video seminar on the MAMO technologies. I'll br briefly go through all the details uh, very quickly. We started with the supported memo technologies and 3GPP LTE. We detailed two memo techniques. One is downlink memo technique and the other is related to the uplink memo technique. We saw this SU memo for both the closed loop multiplexing and also we saw it for the open loop multiplexing system. And we saw that so far 3GPP has not defined it but in future they may define it for the 2, two cross 4 memo system. We also saw some mem MU memo uh, and we uh, for the DL memo we saw it for the single layer per UE and also for the uplink memo we saw it for the collaborative memo and then we saw the transmit diversity for both the cases where uh, the first one was the SFBC and then SFBC along with the FSTD and for the uplink we also saw the uh, transmit antenna selection. So there were various channels that we saw and the channels that were supporting multi antenna mode. So we saw the PDSCH is uh, supporting the transmit diversity and the closed loop special multiplexing and open loop special multiplexing and it is also supporting the MU memo. But the PMCH was not supporting it and similarly the these four channels were supporting the transmit diversity and the PUSCH was supporting the MU memo and likewise these two channels were not transporting any of them. We also saw that there were some uh, transmission modes and then depending upon our application whether we need high throughput or the quality of user experience or things like that. So in that cases we are using different transmission modes and this is the, these were for the LTE release 10. For the LTE release 8 or something they are lesser than this. In the SU memo there is a single layer and all the resources have been allocated to the single user. Then we saw the closed loop spatial multiplexing which was composed of the scrambling mapping and the layer mapping and then how the layer mapper was using the input coming from the modulation mapper and it was converting it to layers then the layers were given to the precoder matrix. Then precoder matrix was transmitting the information of P and T ports and then using the OFD signal generation it was radiated here and the receiver was getting that signal at its input antenna and then it was uh, estimating the channel and then it was feeding back the channel quality information to the uh, towards the precoder for uh, for the uh, su memo we saw the um, specifications for the downlink and uplink 
and also we saw the codebook based recording and details and how the layer mapping is happening we also saw the codebook based recording and also the non codebook based recording and then mu memo we saw how different layers can serve different user equipments and then we saw also since there were different layers so different layers information the pmi information from different layer were coming to the Precoder and since there were different information coming there, so there was a MU processor used and the multi-user processor was processing the information coming from the user and then it was giving it to the precoder and then finally the other the same process was happening again. For the detection method, we, we saw that there are three types of detection. One is the linear detection, which is the simplest one, and then a bit more complicated, but not the optimal one, which was decision feedback detection. And finally, we have the, the optimal detection rules, which is the quasi ML detection. So uh, as we go from left to right, we improve the efficiency, but in, in, alongside improving the efficiency, we also increases the computational complexity. We saw different diversity games from the time diversity, from frequency diversity, from the space diversity, polarization diversity, and multi-user diversity in detail. And we also saw the channel condition for the diversity and also saw the user cell specific uh, reference signal for the channel estimation. So we saw the transmit diversity of two antenna ports and uh, everything in quite details here and also for the four antenna port then we switch to the ul memo and we saw what are the capabilities of the ue how they are working and the closed loop transmit antenna selection and then for the multiplexing of pusch and for the div for diversity of pusch we saw all the details here we also saw how the dmrs is uh, occupying a specific subframe in the resource block we also saw the non precoded uh, SRS and how it is occupying the mm, uh, subframe given resource block. We also saw the details about the uh, UL MU memo. We also compared the SU memo and the MU memo and the uplink. We, and finally, we saw, the we saw the detail about the uplink transmit diversity. And here I will conclude the presentation for the uh, memo technologies. And in next slides, I will explain about the power control scheduling and the interference handling. Thank you very much for having your attention.